following dramatization is based on events in the life of Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy. Material was derived from a variety of books, articles, and interviews. What are you doing up at this ungodly hour? And where are you going? Question is, what are you doing up at this ungodly hour, and where have you been? Aren't you coming to the horse show? You promised. Well, of course I am. I wouldn't miss that. You go on ahead, and Daddy will catch up. You sure? Well, I have to change into something with wider lapels. Let's face it, love. Yours aren't big enough to carry all those blue ribbons and get a win. Don't you dare.
I want a divorce, Jack. She is Mark, isn't she? I want a divorce. Oh, you don't want one any more than I do. You're wrong. This time I mean it. Hush, let's watch her. I'm tired of watching you spend money we don't have. I'm tired of your debts and your drinking and... Jay and Edge. Can't this wait till we get home? No. I'm too vulnerable at home. Too easily talked out of it at home. You'll make your usual promises. And I'll forgive you for something you'll only do again the next day and the next... And... So I'm telling you now, here, where you can't put your arms around me, Do you need a doctor, my darling? No. Oh, you can stand. Well, if a boobier can stand, she can walk. Isn't that so? May I escort you, my angel? I'm not going to give up the children. You want custody? I'll fight for them, Janet. Will you now? You owe thousands in personal debts and thousands in back taxes. Shall I go on? I can, you know, there's lots more. No judge would give you custody. going away. Aha. Uh -huh. I'll miss you. Will you now? Will you miss me? I don't think so. You see, I think that I'm going to see a lot more of you and your sister doing this trial separation than I did before. Oh. Anyway, it's not going to be too long before I lose you to some gink who you think is wonderful because he looks so romantic in the evening. Probably steals his mother's pearl earrings and uses them for dress shirt buttons up. <laughs> don't you think that's funny? Yes. And why aren't you laughing? You're in trouble, old girl. Trouble. You know why? Because you like your old man. We live in a very special world, you and I. A world where we <laughs> fall off horses and off buildings, <sighs> out of airplanes, into oceans. But we show the rest of the world what it's like out there, don't we? Gets a little bumpy. But we always get up again. Don't we?
You're not there to entertain. You're there to learn how to move gracefully, to walk like a young lady. But you can't walk like a young lady if you don't behave like one. Must you be so rebellious? I was just having fun. <sighs> Is he coming to see you tonight? He would like to be called Uncle Hugh. Are you going to marry him? Uncle Hugh has a beautiful place in Newport. Hammersmith Farm, much prettier than Lasada. You'd like that, wouldn't you? And he has three children of his own. You wouldn't be lonely there. I'm not lonely here. Are you? Yes. Very. We're going to be married. Jacqueline, aren't you coming inside? It'll be fine. You see, it'll be just fine. As far as Uncle Hugh is concerned, you're just as much his... as his children. Please, Jacqueline, the guests will be arriving any moment. Inside, Jacqueline, please. Excuse me, miss, but your mother would like you to be there when the guests arrive. Shall I tell her you're coming downstairs? Yes. do you like? Him. Him or her. You have a keen eye. She's the best we have. You'd like to ride her? I'd love to. Go ahead.
Steady now. Trying to bribe you, my darlings. Trying to show you what a great guy he is. Hey, and he's trying to help your mother make you forget your old man. Bribery. Pure bribery. Oh, they look lovely. Well, take that one. And that, you like that, Jacqueline? Yes. Take that one and Lee, you like that? Yes. Oh, yes. Then you shall have it. Well, now, that's it for clothes. We have the shoes, we have the undies. Ladies. On to the next shop. I'll have the bill for you in a moment, Mr. Bouvier. Grab them, send them, and charge them. to inside. I've had calls from every shop in town. What in hell do you think you're doing? Buying up all of Rhode Island? You think that'll make it up to them? They're my children, too, Janet. Mine. I don't like substitute fathers. Substitute fathers? What do you think you've been? Daddy! In here. I've tried to reason with that man. It isn't just his fault, Janet. It's a tug of war. They're the prize. The winner gets the children. Well, I don't intend to lose. I want Jacqueline where he can't get to her every weekend. And where might that be? Miss Porter's school in Farmington, Connecticut. I've been thinking about it for some time. It's a great place for young girls. Teaches them discipline and responsibility. Also, it's some distance from her father. And we couldn't get to see her too often either. I don't mind not seeing her that often. As long as he can't. sort of make their own dress code. For instance, on certain occasions, they all appear in white poplin coats. Oh, how nice. Yes. It's a sort of tradition. Well, I suppose that's it. Unless you have some questions. No. Jacqueline? Well, then ask one of the seniors to point you in the direction of your dormitory. You can walk it. It's not very far. It'll give you a chance to look around. Oh, and I'll send you a white coat. Now, don't look so morose. You're going to love it here. Jacqueline. 
Don't ask for privileges, will you? Try to be like the rest of the girls, hmm? From the day you took your turn as waitress, the dry cleaner in town has declared a dividend on his unprofitable establishment. Why? I fail to understand your behavior. Your English instructor tells me that you are a model student. Well, I like English, and I like him. Well, you can't go around dropping a pie into the lap of an instructor. Another thing. I've been told that you consistently disrupt study periods. You refuse to wear your white coat when the other girls wear theirs. I thought you'd support me in this stupid thing. That's why I wanted you here. Of course I support you always in anything, but there are rules, old girl, for everybody. But you always said there were different rules for different people. Did I say that? Huh. Well, I probably meant it at the time. You confuse me. Both of you confuse me. Mummy keeps telling me to be like all the other girls, and you keep telling me I'm different. I don't know what I am. I'm sorry, Mom. I really am sorry for what we've done to you. But I want you to be you. And when you are, you'll be free of both of us. And then what? All I can do is speak French. That won't get me very much. Not even a husband. I'll probably wind up a house mother here at Farmington and never get married. Even that gink with the pearl buttons <laughs> won't want me. <laughs> They'll all want you. The question is, whom do you want? I want someone like you. Like me. I'm not one to be fashioned after, my darling. You see, I have no real talent, other than maybe a talent to charm. That wears pretty thin after a while. Not with me. Your Adonis is growing old, I'm afraid, my love. I'm not getting up off the ground the way I used to. But you, you always will. How do you know? Well, look, you love horses, don't you? Yes. That's because you're like a beautiful thoroughbred. You're well built, you've got staying power, you can run fast, and you've got brains. But if you're not properly broken and trained, Huh? Mm -hmm. See what I'm getting at? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you'll come out of all this. And you'll do great things. Great things. Jacqueline. <laughs> you say sent you? Arthur Crock of the New York Times. Who sent you to Arthur Crock? Uh, my, my stepfather, Hugh Arkinclaus. Society, huh? Well, I... What's your background? Bassa. You know what the job is? Inquiring photographer. We usually give that assignment to the member of the staff who's voted least likely to succeed. Well, I think I can do something with it. What? 
I said I think I, I can... I can hear you. I'm asking what you can do with it. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, this is Washington, Mr. Waltrip. There are provocative issues and people. It's a fun column. Oh, I, I know. I, I was coming to that. Provocative and fun. Lots of fun. Forty-two fifty a week. I'll take it. You got it. Thank you, Mr. Walter. Yeah. By the way, you better shed that chiffon if you want to look like a real newspaper man. Can you work a Graflex? A Graflex? <laughs> of course I can. Of course. Hello? Hello? Darling, I'm taking a later plane. What? Well, I missed the first one, that's why. Oh, terrific. Of course I got it. Hey, what's a Graflex? Well, you sure sounded enthusiastic about getting the job. I'm so excited. We'll take turns traveling each weekend. It'll be such fun. Okay. I'll come here to New York and you'll come to Washington. You intend to commute every weekend, do you? Other week. On 4250. I have a pretty solid job, Mr. Bouvier. Stockbroker. Yes. We have something in common, you and I. <laughs> Let's have some lunch, shall we? There's a charming little place around the corner. Fine. Luckily, they're not too fussy about dress. You don't like my outfit? You look like a third baseman. Well? Well, what? Do we have your permission? Oh, thank you, sir. It'll never work, you know. Hello, I'm Jacqueline Bouvier, the inquiring photographer. Would you like to answer a question? Why do so many people vote the same party ticket year after year? Coward once said. Who? Noel, Noel Coward once said some women should be struck regularly, like gongs. How do you feel about that? Who? Can you spot a married Please, man? Please, lady, leave me alone. Winston Churchill once said, for a happy marriage, each spouse should breakfast alone. Do you agree? You're not a bad tripper upper yourself, Congressman, from what I hear. Married? Engaged. He's in New York. Yeah. Travel weekends, I suppose. When we can. You? Hmm? Be what? Married. Yeah, please. Hmm. Anti-marriage, are you? Only for me. Why? Well, I don't think I'd make a very good husband. Really? Of course, it might be handicapped when I run for president. President? Mm hmm Of the United States? Well, unless I uh, change my citizenship. I'm, I'm sorry. That was stupid of me. It's just that you have said it as if it were fait accompli. Oh, you speak French? It's a rather lofty ambition. What, speaking French? Being president. Wanting to be president. Well, if... Um, Ambitions aren't lofty. They're uh, not really ambitions, are they? Jackie, Mr. Waldrop. Hi. Hi. 
Congratulations. You made it big. Five dollars a week raise and a byline. Oh, thank you, Mr. Waldrop. With it go new responsibilities. I want you to start interviewing some political figures. Broaden your base. But I can't get there, John. I just can't. Well, I'm on special assignment. Of course I'd love to see you. Look, why don't you come here? Well, if it's business, you better attend the party. I miss you, too. Next weekend, for sure. Bye. Darling. Have you ever considered working at a career outside the government? Not really. This country's given a great deal to the Kennedy family. You've been taught to give back. Would you like to have lunch with me? What? When? Now. I only brought one. One what? Sandwich. We'll go splits, okay? You're not really going to eat that, are you? Why not? Well, it looks awful. <laughs> Everyone makes such a big deal about food. You want a beer? Do you eat like this every day? Oh, every day I can. I usually uh, work as I swallow. Saves a lot of time, gets things done. I'm sure you won't change your mind. I'd sooner eat the bag it came in. You're really serious about this president thing, aren't you? I am. Why? Why does it mean that much? Well, everyone has a dream, and uh, that one's mine. And your father's, I understand. My father always thought that uh, my brother Joe Jr. would be the first potato-eating Irish Catholic president of the United States. And he was killed in the war, and I'm next in line. Do you mind being a replacement? Well, it's more like... Uh, Accession. You sound like royalty. This country is in a mess right now, like the rest of the world. And you're the man who can change it. Well, uh, let's just say that uh, progress is made because of uh, ideas, fresh ones, new ones, ideas, and I have a few. I want to get this country moving again. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck with your dream. Well, it's not a dream anymore. Once you open your eyes, it's surreal. What are you doing? Did you order this? Uh, no, I don't think so. What is it? Lunch. Lunch? Pate of veal, salad niçoise with, I mean, avec, asperge, sorbet de fraise, cafe, and a bottle of muscadet. That's the wrong office. I've got mine right there. It's for you. Bought and paid for. Well, who said it? No card. There's a call for you. Who is it? Jack Kennedy. Hello? Oh, hello there. Whispering? I have a sore throat. What? 
Oh, I'm sure it'll be better tonight. Eight o'clock is fine. <laughs> Bye. Business. Business. No, I, I can't. Uh, you can't A friend come of in? mine's holding the cab out here. Uh, he's joining us. You don't mind, do you? From my home state. Home state? Yeah, good. Uh, grab your coat. Go on. Well, let me tell you something. One thing I've learned about politics, you never know who can suddenly deliver support. The uh, smallest man in the smallest job in the uh, smallest district. Nevertheless, you can never overstate the importance of good organization. Obviously, the candidate and his ability and personality and personality are extremely uh, important. Don't forget the power of television. What I'm trying to say, Jack, is that apart from $3.25, sir. Oh, uh, do me a favor, will you? Come prepared. I never remember to uh, carry money. But without good telephone campaigns and uh, uh, good press relations and voter registration, well, you're talking about the nuts and bolts of any political campaign. <laughs> The uh, people of this country must feel some sort of personal bond with their president. He no longer is able to campaign with only printed statements of policy. Now that the people can see him in their homes, they want to be able to walk with him, touch him. In a sense, the uh, candidate loses his mystique, Jack. I'm not sure that that's good. It brings him down to a different level. It brings him up to a different level. He is face-to-face uh, -face with the people who elected him. What's wrong with that? Woman power is the uh, great neglected resource of American politics have the uh, time, the energy, and the uh, political concern. And uh, any candidate who can arouse their enthusiasm can be uh, almost unbeatable. You appeal to the women of this country, and the, uh, the young ones will want to marry you, and the uh, old ones will want to mother you. All I want to do is get out. What? This woman power is home. Oh. Don't bother. Good night. Might as well have stayed in that cab because you're not going one step further. If you think you can ignore me all night and then play catch up. Ignore you? Yes. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. Uh... Look, that man is very important to me. Well, then go to his apartment. Don't you ever think of anything but politics? Well, that's, uh, not what I've got on my mind right now. Well, you might as well have. You struck out, Congressman. I'm sorry to ruin your evening, but you don't get my vote. Good night. Wait, wait. wait. Look, I'm sorry. I, I truly am. I, I just uh, like what I do, I guess. But day and night? That doesn't leave much time for anything else or anyone. Do those... Uh, other girls you date mind spending the evening this way? What uh, other girls? Those uh, other girls you're photographed with during your campaign trips. Oh, those other girls. Well, um, I never really asked them what they thought. Well, you haven't asked me either. You already told me. Then there isn't much left to say. Good night. Hey. Still engaged? Hi. 
high. When your fiance, after six weeks apart, greets you by offering her cheek, we better talk. And things were happening so fast, things I never expected to happen. Like Helen said, mm -hmm. Helen, my friend, she said we ought to go to London for the coronation, and I said sure, so we're covering it for the newspaper. Would you believe it? Well, I might believe it, if I could understand you. Oh, oh John, it, it's all so new to me. New people, new things, new world. I'm not ready to give it up. I love it, all of it. Your father was right when he said it wouldn't work. My father would be jealous of any man who wanted me. No, it's more than that. He knows more than anyone that his daughter isn't really cut out for the conservative or safe life, like your mother. His daughter, Jackie, wanting the same things. Grand scale, large gesture, wide canvas. It's much more than an ordinary old stockbroker can offer a very special lady. I'm sorry, John. Yeah, me too. Friends? Friends. I'm Jacqueline Bouvier of the American Press. As an Englishwoman, are you excited about the coronation? I am indeed excited about the coronation. I am appalled at the waste of money when people are starving all over the world. Ritualism must become a thing of the past. Thank and I feel... Thank you very much. I feel that the future of the oppressed organizations of the world... Thank you. You asked me a question, young lady. I've only asked you what you asked. Why are you running away from the truth? bringing Jack home to dear old dad. <laughs> a Republican, huh? Died in the flesh. Conservative right down the line. He also hates the sound of anything pronounced Kennedy. You see, Jack's father was the head of the SEC after the crash, and my father blames him for everything, from the loss of his money up to and including World War II, maybe even one. Can you picture me bringing Jack home under those circumstances? Anyway, just doesn't take me seriously. Maybe it's because he's 13 years older than I. Well, didn't he even call to say goodbye or send flowers or, or write something romantic? Romantic? The last date we had, he called me because he couldn't get an appointment with his barber. We went to a movie about politics. He's, he, he's crazy and, and elusive and, and he's really going to be president of the United States. What would he want with me? Yes? Jacqueline Bouvier, please. Speaking. Hi, it's Jack Kennedy. Uh, hello. How's it going? 
just fine, thank you. I've been uh, reading your dispatches. They're uh, very good. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. How are you? Well, fine, fine. A and you? Just fine, just fine. Uh, why are we shouting? What? I said, why are we shouting? Oh, I, I don't know. Ridiculous habit, isn't it? <laughs> yes, uh, uh, ridiculous. Yes. Uh, listen, wh wh when are you coming home? Wednesday. Flight 42. It arrives at noon. Oh, good, good. I, uh, I was hoping it would be before that. Really? Why? You remember those books you said you wanted to get for me? Books? Hmm, yes. Foreign politics. And legislation. Uh, did you get them? Some. I'll send them to you. Well, see if you can get the rest, okay? And uh, I'd rather you brought them with you because uh, I need them right away. Okay. Okay. Books. He wants books. Exhausted. Porter? What? What are they all doing out here? Now, one of them is inside. What are they all doing out Listen, here? Will you, and calm down. Listen to me, Senator John F. Kennedy. When you are president, the first thing you will do, the very first thing you hear me, is pass a law executing any customs inspector who doesn't help you lift your bags. Promise me. Okay. Promise me. Right, done. Did you get the books? What do you think is in there? A hundred dollars overweight. You owe me one hundred dollars now. Oh, I never carry money. I want it I, now. Sh I'll pay you later. Who's going to tip the porter? If you don't carry money, you expect me to... Now, look, I'm not very good at this sort of thing. Will you... Marry me. What? I missed you. Yeah? The minute I saw you, I uh, knew you'd be the one I'd marry. How big of you? You sure you're not doing this just to get out of paying for the books? Get in. Come on, come on. Get in. Get in. Get in. Oh, Jack. What? You did ask me to marry you, didn't you? I think I did. I can't believe it. I'm not sure I can. Did I answer you? I don't remember. Yes. My answer is yes. Listen, uh, do me a favor, will you? What? You need money for the cab? No, no, no. Beside that, uh, don't uh, say anything for a while about you and me, okay? Why not? Well, the uh, <clears throat> Saturday Evening Post is uh, coming out with an article. Uh, Jack Kennedy, the uh, Senate's eligible young bachelor. <laughs> uh, wouldn't be fair to them, know what I mean?
When you were just learning to read and write, the first thing I taught you was that Kennedy was a dirty word around the house. I'm not marrying his father. Thank God for small favors. All my misfortunes on Wall Street can be blamed on the Kennedys. On one Kennedy. Kennedy's a Kennedy, and you want to become one. And a Democrat, dear God, a Democrat to boot. <clears throat> well, I shall be in my room watching the fight on television. You will stay right here. Now, you just listen. This fight is more important to me than meeting some Democrat senator whose family robbed me of every remaining cent. You will stay where you are, and you will be civil. You'll be civil. Civil. Hi. Oh, boy. That bad, huh? Oh, boy. Jack Kennedy, Jack Bouvier. Mm, how do you do, sir? Fine. Why don't we uh, sit, sit down? Mm. <clears throat> My chair. Mm? Oh. Lower back problems. Oh, really? Uh, you know, I'm uh, troubled by the same thing, old war injury. Uh, I know a very fine doctor, Mr. Bouvier. I have He's... my own doctor. <clears throat> Thanks. Jack? What's on your mind, Senator? Ah, uh, Jack, please. Yeah. What's on your mind, Jack? Well, shall I uh, be completely honest? I would hope so. Before we put on the gloves, uh, would you mind if I caught some of the fight? Two great boys. Fine. Hmm. <clears throat> well, no. Hmm. Like the fights, do you? Ah, the good ones, yes. <clears throat> Don't suppose you were betting that, are you? Ten dollars on Charles. No. What about uh, ten dollars more? Doesn't go five rounds. You got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> My kid's got a great left hook. Won't live to throw it. <laughs> Jack Lee, what about a drink? Huh? A little wee one for me, a scotch. Uh, you got any beer? Yes. Beer drinker, huh? Sometimes. I like beer. Uh, uh, Jack Lee, I'll have a beer, too. I don't suppose you ordered a beer when you were at Hammersmith Farm, did you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great little scene with the bride's mother and step-daddy. <laughs> I'm going to leave you two. You know how I feel about the fights. Reynolds' nose is reddening a bit. You know, Mr. Bouvier, um, Jackie is just uh, another example of the new generation. So many of us, we uh, see things differently from our fathers. Cheers. Oh, cheers. is incredible. She's more competitive than the boy. <laughs> you know, Jack, she just might be president one of these days. Competition. That's what makes him go. Go where? You don't think much of competition. Well, it's not me. It's part of everyone. Would you like some more iced tea? No, thank you. Bobby! Jack, Jack, look at this. Bobby! Good shot, good shot! Can't run, Bobby. I can't, huh? How'd you like to come in here and try and stop me? Uh -huh. Now, go on, Jack. That's a direct challenge. Hey, listen, you don't mind, do you? Oh, you take your lady with you. You're not much for competition, participation. Good idea. Come on, Jackie, let's get him. Come on. Sturgeon Kennedy and Movie 8! Teddy, why don't you come in over here? All right. Now, if he thinks I'm going to run, we'll cross him and I'll pass. Oh, you, Teddy. All right? One, two, right. Teddy! Okay, now, uh, 
He thinks, I think, he's gonna run. So he'll try and cross me up and pass. So uh, guard your receivers with your lives, all right? Yeah. What, do, yeah. what do I do? I just said it. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Don't let Teddy catch the ball. If he does, tag him hard. Okay, break. Watch it on the right. You're going out again? I'm not sure. You know what I'm afraid of, Ambassador? Tell me. I'm afraid your family will kill me before I ever get to marry you. <laughs> if they do, it'll be unintentional. What does that mean? They like it. Well, thank God. I wonder what would happen if they didn't. <laughs> you know something? You've got Zipperoo. Got what? Zipperoo. You're going to be good for Jack. Am I? Mm-hmm. Good for his career, too. You have class. Uh, you're also Catholic, French Catholic, which is a little more aristocratic than us Irish. Are you serious? Perfectly. Jacqueline, we're going to get along fine. I hope so, Ambassador. Uh-huh. Let me tell you something. You may run your family like a tribal chieftain, but it's not going to be that way with me. I will not become an organization wide Kennedy version. I mean to keep my identity as well as my personal independence. And when we summer at Hyannisport, my husband and I are not going to dine at your house every night as the others do. Once a week, okay, but not every night. I warn you, life with me will not be easy, but life with your son won't be easy either. He has uh, more faults than a lot of men I know. He has a, a track record with beautiful, empty-headed starlets and models. And he'll probably be by his own admission a lousy husband. But like my father, he's the most fascinating man I've ever known. And I think he'll be worth the trouble. So there. Anything else? Just that what I want more than anything else in the world is to be married to him. You're gonna be a good wife. More important, you're gonna be one hell of a first lady. anything lavish, just a nice, small, tasteful wedding. No prints, no pictures, just a discreet announcement in the Newport papers. She lost her mind. My daughter's marrying a public figure, a United States senator. A man who one day is going to be president of the United States. There'll be photographers whether she likes it or not. So the idea is to show them off to the best advantage. The entire Senate? He's invited the entire United States Senate? Jack, you give that woman a message for me. You tell her to take care of the confetti and I'll do the organizing. That man is bringing in every Irish Catholic priest that's ever been ordained. It's going to be a Roman ritual. I'd hold it, everybody. I've asked Archbishop Cushing to perform the ceremony and we'll get Monsignor Rossiter to assist him. Oh, All right? <laughs> It's turning into a cast of thousands, thousands. Now, what's she complaining about? There's only 600 at the church and 1,200 at the reception.
Hello, Ross. Mr. Bouvier, and how are you, sir? Never better. You? I'm fine, just fine. I've been away for a long time, haven't I? Mm. I really deserve a whole new wardrobe. <laughs> I've been awfully busy. You know how it is, you look in the closet and suddenly, nothing to wear. <laughs> Ross, my daughter is being married. Yes, yeah, so I've read. Yeah. I need a cutaway. With accessories. Mr. Bouvier, I... Please. I'm supposed to give away the bride. I want to walk down that aisle with pride. Especially in front of that crowd down there. With pride, Ross. That girl, my daughter, is all that is holy to me. A cutaway. I want to prove to that mob who Jacqueline's real father is. I'll need some shoes. Gray suede, I thought. Good? Mm. Different, I think, yes. And pearl cufflinks, and of course, stud, pearl studs. Mm. Oh, and please, Ross, for God's sake, the left shoulder. Remember the left shoulder? Always wrong with the left shoulder. That last jacket I had. I wasn't really pleased. Did I tell you? Anyway, the left shoulder. This is nice. Nice for the afternoon. Not exactly with pearl buttons. <laughs> Sign right here, please. Thank you. And Miss Bouvier, Just would you one second, any... gentlemen. Show Mr. Bouvier to his room, please. You did say room. Why? I trust the suite is an adequate one. Uh, yes, of course, Mr. Bouvier. Uh, sir, would you care to make that statement now? Gentlemen, just say that there was never any doubt in my mind that I had spawned a future lady of greatness. You understand, of course, that spawning a great lady is not easy. One is constantly bucking the tide. Gentlemen, gentlemen, just in case Jack does not become president, Jacqueline will still be first lady of the land and has been always to her adoring father. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Bouvier. Mr. Bouvier. Mr. Bouvier. Where's the bar? Hi. Oh, hello, dear. Has Daddy arrived? Yes. Something wrong? Jacqueline, I'd rather he didn't give the bride away. If he must be at the wedding. Must be? I'd rather he didn't give you away. Don't be ridiculous. He's my father. He's not your father. He's your suitor. And he's made me the ogre of your life. The one who forced you to brush your teeth, the one who taught you manners. All he ever did was indulge you. Can't you do what will be the last thing you'll ever have to do together? Can't you walk down the aisle side by side? Jacqueline, I'd like your stepfather to give you away. No. Jacqueline, he's earned the right. No. He's raised you, and now he's being shunted aside as though he were hired help. No! He's wonderful, but he's not my father. You'll be doing your father a favor. 
deep inside, he's terrified of taking that walk with you. They know all about him, every one of them. It's even possible, quite possible, he won't show up. He'll be there because I want him to be. He'll be there. You'll see. Take all your pictures outside. Almost. He's not here, Jacqueline. The church is almost full. And he hasn't arrived. Everyone's very anxious to begin. He probably couldn't get through the crowds. Anyway, he's always late. He'll be here. Darling, I don't think we should delay any longer. We're not starting until he gets here. I'm sorry, darling. We can't wait much longer. Oh, it should be. Excuse me. Okay. Would you mind calling the hotel? Yeah, of course. Hello. Uh, no, sir, I haven't seen it this morning. Oh, yes, of course. I'd be glad to. Yes, sir. Fitzgerald Kennedy, do you take Jacqueline Bouvier here present for your lawful wife according to the right of our Holy Mother, the Church? I do. Jacqueline Bouvier, do you take John Fitzgerald Kennedy here present for your lawful husband according to the right of our Holy Mother, the Church? I do. Now join your right hands and pronounce after me your wedding vow. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Take you, Jacqueline Bouvier. Take you, Jacqueline Bouvier. For my lawful wife. For my lawful wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. 
for richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. I, Jacqueline Bouvier. I, Jacqueline Bouvier. Take you, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Take you, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. For my lawful husband. For my lawful husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. By the authority of the church, I ratify and bless the bond of marriage you have contracted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. And now the ring, please. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, this ring, which we are blessing in your name, so that she who wears it, keeping faith with her husband in unbroken loyalty, may ever remain at peace with you according to your will, and may live with him always in mutual love. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Strengthen, O God, what you have wrought in us from your holy temple, which is in Jerusalem. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. so sure that anyone can beat Ike out of a second term, especially a young upstart Catholic. You have to ease yourself inside. That's why I think you ought to make a run for the lower half of the ticket. It's a lousy job. Even if the ticket does win, I get stuck there for eight years. Well, he may have a point yet. Well, the only problem is Kefauver. Estes wants this badly. And uh, I'd hate to see the party divided going into the convention. Yeah, but Kefauver's made a mistake, in my opinion. I mean, he hasn't taken the time to make friends in the House, and even in the Senate, he goes pretty much his own way. It's always well, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, 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 I know you have your own opinions. Gentlemen, put Mr. Chairman, Senate 
Tennessee, Mr. Chairman, Tennessee respectfully requests the opportunity to change its vote to Senator Kefauver. Now get Mahoney down here. Right away. Jackie. What happened? Everything went wrong, Jack, all at once. It started when Gore released his Tennessee delegates to Kefauver. Oklahoma heard about it, and they switched, and it started to snowball. Minnesota cast their Humphrey votes for Kefauver, and then Missouri jumped on the bandwagon, and suddenly the string ran out. 39 votes. That's all you needed to go over the top. And they are nowhere to be found. Maybe... What? Maybe they felt you're not ready, Jack. Yeah. Well, um... I guess the best thing I can do now is uh, get up there and uh, move that Kefauver be nominated by acclamation. I'll be there in an hour. I'm so sorry, Jack. Yeah. Well, at least your uh, antiques are safe for a while. All the stupid things I did. All the things I, I didn't do. Might have made all the difference. Damn it, so close, so ridiculously close. You know, it might be for the best, Jack. Another four years, and you might be able to skip the vice presidency. Yes. I'm speaking. It's uh, my father calling from South France. Hello? Hello, Dad. No, it's, uh, it's all over. They uh, went for Kefauver. Look, I think it's important that we analyze this thing quickly. I could uh, fly out and visit with you in the morning. Good, good, all right, I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Jack, I can't go, I'm too uncomfortable. I'd rather not be alone at this time. Why don't you stay with your mother while I get back? But I... I'm going, Jackie. Now, that's the end of it. That's right, Senator. Run to Papa. You lost your marbles, so you better run to Papa and find out how to get them back. Baby isn't due for a month. I'll be back long before that. Really? I have to go. There are fences to mend. If you go, Jack, you'll have to mend them with me. When I get back, I'm in politics, Jackie. I know I'm not around here as often as you'd like me to be, but I can't play nursemaid to you and be in politics. I don't want a nursemaid. I want a husband, someone who's close enough to touch once in a while. Okay. Go ahead, then. But you seem to have forgotten one thing, Jack. When things go wrong and you feel a need to run to your family, that's what I am.
Irish, darling. Oh, you look lovely. Oh, yes, lovely. You do, you look lovely. <laughs> oh, I don't <laughs> think so. Come in. Feeling better? I think so. Oh, good. Here, I want you to drink this. It might help. I haven't slept all week. How is it? Delicious. Oh, good. Okay. You go to sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Listen to me, son. You just have to forget what happened at the convention. It's past. Just don't make the same mistakes. You want the nomination for the presidency in 1960. You start now. Crisscross the country. Talk to the politicians in every state. Address conventions, accept speaking engagements everywhere. You spread your name and your reputation across the land. Excuse me, Senator. I don't mean to interrupt, but this message just arrived for you. Thank you. If you're home any weekend during the next four years, it's because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. The baby was uh, stillborn. You know, it's, uh, it's funny about you guys. Uh, last year, you kept telling me to uh, get into the race. Now you're telling me I should feel happy because I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Things are going to be different in 60, though. I, I promise you that. We uh, made too many mistakes on the convention floor, and uh, we shall be careful not to repeat them. For one, we're uh, starting early. We're starting now. With only hours of work and a uh, handful of supporters, I came within 34 votes of winning the vice presidential nomination. So, if I were a card for the next four years, uh, we should be able to pick up all the marbles. Oh, how's it going, huh? Good. Be charming. Oh, always. Hello? I'll be there.
get some shopping done before the baby comes. It's going to be any minutes, huh? It could be. Glad to see you. Me too. Never did thank you for your letter. Of course, I always expected to be forgiven for my behavior on your wedding day, but never with such eloquence. Shouldn't you be in bed? Hmm? Oh, I'm never where I'm supposed to be. Why stop now? <laughs> smells in here, doesn't it? it? Smells like a pig pen. Give, give, give me some of that uh, cologne, will you? Last of the Bouvier extravagances. It's damned expensive. But it's French and refreshing. They're putting out a domestic version, poor imitation, not for me. No, no, no imitations for you. Jack gonna make it? Yes. We're already making plans for the campaign. He'll do well. I hope so. The wrong party, but he'll do well. And you will, too. I'm frightened. Ah. Uh, of what? Same as you, I guess. Walking down the aisle. People looking at me, pointing fingers. Maybe even laughing at me, expecting more from a Kennedy. Mm. Now, you listen to your old dad, Jacqueline. Best advice I'll ever give you. When you walk into the White House, remember who you are. Smile, chin up, eyes straight ahead. And when you take center stage, create an aura around yourself. Maintain a certain aloofness. Withhold a little something, tease a little bit. Be mysterious. And above all, never let them know what you're thinking. You were destined for greatness, my darling. Disappointed it wasn't a boy? We're very happy with Caroline. The next one will be a boy. Oh, Senator, 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 question of politics, Senator. Do you think the uh, question of your religion will still be a factor in the presidential race? Well, I would hope that uh, no American, considering the really critical issues facing this country, would uh, waste his franchise or throw away his vote by uh, voting either for me or against me because my religious affiliation is not relevant. I am saying to you that my decisions on every public policy will be my own. As an American, 
as a Democrat, and as a free man. We stand today on the frontier of the 1960s, the frontier of unknown opportunities and perils, the frontier of unfilled hopes and unfilled threats. The new frontier of which I speak is not a set of promises. It is a set of challenges. It sums up not what I intend to offer to the American people, but what I intend to ask of them. It would be easier to shrink from that new frontier, to look to the safe mediocrity of the past, to be lulled by good intentions and high rhetoric. And those who prefer that course should not vote for me or the Democratic Party. Senator Kennedy and Senator Johnson are headed for an electoral college majority if this trend continues, although they are carrying fewer than half of the 50 states over the Republican team of Vice President Richard Nixon and Henry Cabot Lodge. Unofficial returns from all 50 states indicate that the popular vote favors Senator Kennedy by less than two-tenths of one percent. And as the counting continues, either candidate could be president of the United States by morning. Now let's turn to well, Congress. we won't know anything until morning. Margins are slightly reduced. So, uh, as well the Democrats will retain control of Congress of the 34 Senate seats at stake. The Democrats seem certain of 21 to the Republicans, 13. The Republicans picked up seats in Wyoming and Delaware at last count. J. Allen Freer, the Delaware Democrat, was the only incumbent hey. senator to lose his... Hey, come on upstairs. The Republicans added 22 in the House of Representatives. What happened? Nothing, nothing yet. Uh, the new what does it look like? Yeah, like uh, him or me. That tight, huh? <laughs> that tight. You were sure you voted for me. Well, I, uh, I wasn't going to, but then I thought, what if he loses by one vote? He'll know it was me. <laughs> you won't laugh if I tell you something, will you? I'll try not to. I voted just for you. No one else. Oh. It's not every day that someone can vote for her husband to become president of the United States. I didn't want to dilute that by voting for someone else. Oh, well, that's uh, no problem. Somebody else will lose by one vote. That's his problem. That's right. <laughs> you know, um, if you become uh, first lady, there's some concessions you'll have to make to the role. Oh, I will. I'll wear hats. <laughs> Come on. Ah. <laughs> I hope this one's a boy. Will be. And I hope he's okay. He will be. You know what I wish? What do you wish? I wish my father had lived to be a grandfather. Yeah. I don't know why I'm talking so much. Nervous, I guess. Hey, please put your arms around me. Wherever they'll fit. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Finch and I have just finished analyzing the latest elections results with Vice President Nixon. The last state we analyzed was Minnesota, where Senator Kennedy now leads. We believe that he will hold that lead and get the electoral vote count that he needs to win the office of the presidency. Oh, bye. I'm going as fast as I can. You OK? Uh-huh. Jack, Jack, get up, will you? Jack. What, what? Congratulations, Mr. President. You sure? Sure. Has Nixon conceded? Pretty soon. Herb Klein's going to make a speech. Come on. Vice President Nixon has asked me to deliver two messages, if I may. 
first, on his behalf, he would like me to express his deep appreciation to the thousands of workers throughout the country who put so much time and effort and money and enthusiasm into making this the closest of all election campaigns. They're magnificent. The Vice President has sent a congratulatory telegram to Senator Kennedy, and I'd like to read that to you. I want to extend my congratulations and best wishes to you. I know that you will have the united support of all Americans as you lead the nation in the cause of freedom and peace during the next four years. That's signed Richard M. Nixon. <laughs> Why did you run? I don't know. Suddenly got so big, Jack. Being first lady? No. Being the wife of the president. Can't think of myself as first lady. Not yet. Right now, I'm the president's wife. How does it feel? I'm numb. Jack, I'm actually numb. Who are these men? Secret Service. So many of them. Why do we need so many of them? It's routine. The uh, president has to be protected. From what? Relax. Nothing's going to happen. I've been enamored of uh, President Eisenhower's Hamburg, so I'm opting for top hats at the inauguration. I'd call it a touch of class, Senator. Now, I've asked Robert Frost to do me the honor of uh, reciting a poem he would write, and uh, he's accepted. I've also given a great deal of thought to the uh, soloist. What do you think of uh, Marian Anderson to sing the national anthem? Great choice, sir.
Mr. Pavlik? Mr. Pavlik? Secret Service received word from his hometown in New Hampshire that he was here in Palm Beach. He intended to ram his car into yours last Sunday with the dynamite charge, but he couldn't do it. Why not? Because Mrs. Kennedy and the children were there. He said he couldn't do anything like that in front of them. So he postponed to this Sunday. It's all down here in the letter he intended to leave. Because the uh, Kennedys bought the presidency and the White House. We'll take extra precautions at the inauguration. No, that, uh, that won't be necessary. Senator Kennedy, the minute you become president of the United States, you're gonna have to do exactly what we tell you. Funny, I uh, always thought it was the other way around. <laughs> John Fitzgerald Kennedy solemnly swear, I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear that you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of your ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. The federal housing program will be uh, greeted by Congress in the orthodox manner. The Republicans will be screaming that it goes too far towards the left and the, uh, uh, don't do that please. Uh, too far to the left and the liberal Democrats will say that it's uh, too far right. Nevertheless, I asked you not to do that. Nevertheless, it is designed to revitalize the cities as well as encourage a prosperous building industry. And uh, now you'll have to leave. I told you not to do that, and now you have to leave. Mrs. Kennedy is ready for the first question. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy. <laughs> Mrs. Kennedy, have you decided what your role will be here in the White House? My role? I mean, what are you going to do? Provide a normal life for my children and a peaceful home for my husband. It doesn't matter what else you do. If you don't do that part well, you fail. That really is the uh, role which means the most to me, the one that comes first. Traditionally. President's wives have had an obligation to contribute something. Uh, this president's wife contributes to this president and his children. Is it true that you spend about $30,000 a year on clothes, Mrs. Kennedy? Don't be ridiculous. It's been reported that I couldn't spend that much unless I wore sable underwear. <laughs> How much do you spend? Really, is that the most important thing you people have on your mind? My clothes? After all that's uh, happening in the... <sighs> Mrs. Kennedy realizes that the public is interested in the clothes she wears. But she is distressed by the overemphasis of fashion in the press. Now, for the next four years, Mrs. Kennedy's clothes will be designed by Ole Cassini and will be made here in America. She will buy what is necessary, and you will often see her photographed in the same outfits. Pretty dogs. Yes. Pretty big. Yes. What do they eat? Reporters. I have stood on the top of slippery automobiles while pregnant, speaking in Spanish. I have been jostled half to death by crowds. I have done everything I could to help you get elected. Now that you're president, all right. I realize that I'm in somewhat of a 
goldfish bowl, while I'm ready to accept much of it, I will not be questioned as to whether my panties are nylon or silk. I have a private life. Yes, you have. You've just uh, added a country to it, that's all. And the people of that country, you're a uh, symbol, a very important symbol. And I never knew a symbol who didn't stand for something. Like what? Oh, that's up to you. But once you give them something else to question you about, they will. Good evening, sir. Is this Kennedy? Good evening. Your guests have arrived, Mr. President. Thank you. We'll uh, have our coffee in the East Room. And uh, would you make sure that the uh, fireplace is lit, please? The fireplace, sir? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't advise it, Mr. President. Why not? None of the fireplaces has been in use for years. Well, it's the time they were. As you wish, sir. It is inconceivable to me that the residents of the President of the United States can be in a condition where the fireplaces are unusable. <clears throat> no, it is not inconceivable. It is typical. Typical of the decay in this crumbling mansion. Watch it, Mr. President. That's public property. Depressed. Maybe we can get the uh, soot concession here. Swell. Why wouldn't it work? What? The fireplace, everything. This place is a mess, Jack. I mean, it isn't even functional anymore, and it looks so awful. The furniture is a hodgepodge of different styles and different periods. It's dismal. I feel like we live in an institution. The whole place should be refurnished and redecorated. Well, with that, I'm uh, going to bed. Jack. Mm-hmm. You know what the White House should be? What? The prettiest house in America. <laughs> well, isn't it? No, but it will be. I promise you it will be. goes beyond politics, and I think that you're the one who should chair the Fine Arts Committee. Good morning, Mrs. Kennedy. Mr. Finley, I wanted to follow up my phone conversation with a personal meeting. How delightful. I formed a committee called the White House Historical Association. It will need a chairman. I'd like you to be it. You're not an easy one to refuse. Why would you? I can't think of a reason uh, my office is this way. Thank you so much for the tour. It was lovely. Now that the bill is passed, we're going to need a curator. And I thought you should know that you've just applied for the job. <laughs> Here's a list of those who are likely to send money. Tell them we also accept gifts, antiques, paintings. Or get hold of museum people, gallery owners. this go on? For months. And months and months. And I'm going on television to show the country what I've done. And I have a great guest star coming on at the end. Oh, who? The President of the United States. Look happy, Jack. Your symbol is on the move. A tour of the White House with Mrs. John F. Kennedy. For the next hour, Mrs. John F. Kennedy invites you to visit the White House and see some of the restorations she has made in its interior. 
Mrs. John F. Kennedy, third youngest of the 29 wives to live in the White House. Mrs. Kennedy, I understand that after a dinner in the state dining room, it's customary to withdraw to the red room. May we? Of course. Everything in this room is empire, because the style of the room is dictated by the mantelpiece, which is empire. Uh, how's she doing? She's handling it like an old pro. <clears throat> Gentlemen, a uh, star is born. <laughs> President Le Gaulle is looking forward to your visit, Mr. President. There are many things on the agenda which he's anxious to discuss. Uh, the common market, uh, NATO... You tell uh, the President that uh, I am most eager for the meeting. Thank you, sir. One more thing, if I may. There is something here which has put me in a state of shock. And I must voice my concern. About what? The lack of security here. Chimonet, this uh, is our weekend home. Uh, neither my wife nor myself want it to resemble an armed camp. But Mr. President, uh, there are no guards or police at the entrance. No sign of anyone along the drive. Uh, the front door is unattended, and anyone could have come up that path and shot you as you came out to greet me. Well, I suppose that's true, but... Along the driveway of Charles de Gaulle's country home, there is a sentry posted every 20 meters. You know, Mr. Manet, you, uh, <clears throat> you put a man on a high building with a uh, telescopic rifle, and uh, there's nothing anyone can do to defend the president's life. The uh, risk of assassination is an unavoidable hazard of all of us in public life. We uh, do what we can to uh, protect ourselves and hope it's enough, but uh, anyone who lives in fear should not uh, run for this office. I understand. How'd it go? Fine, fine. That's uh, too bad, though. What? Well, I really wish you uh, weren't so busy redecorating the White House, you know? Then I could take you with me. Where? Paris. Paris? In May. Jack! <laughs> Do I detect a change of attitude? Paris, you wouldn't dare go without me. Well, actually, uh, I wouldn't. You know why? Why? Because you'll flip the mustache off to Gaulle. He's French, and uh, they love great-looking broads. And you, Mrs. Kennedy, are a uh, great-looking broad. Well, why shouldn't I be? After all, my clothes cost a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> frightened by the crowds. They sound as though they're ready to stampede, but that's only enthusiasm from the head of state. Are you ready? Ready.
Merci. Bien, you? Merci. Je suis très heureux. What's that mean? I am very happy. But what am I so uh, terrible about? They don't even know I'm here. We just told the general she has read this memoir in French. Jacqueline Kennedy to Paris, and uh, I have enjoyed it. We've been advised against your making the trip. Why? There have been more than the usual threats. We'd feel better if your itinerary did not include Dallas. Threats are like uh, hail of the chiefs there, out of the office. Mr. President, the Dallas News has run an ad from some right-wing group asking why you had ordered or permitted your brother Bobby to go soft on communists, fellow travelers, and ultra-leftists in America while permitting him to persecute loyal Americans who criticize you. How can people write such things? It was in Dallas, sir, that Adlai Stevenson and even Vice President Johnson were manhandled by extremists. Look, the Secret Service cannot guarantee your safety in this area. Now, look. I went to Caracas, where Nixon was endangered by rioters. I stood overlooking the Berlin Wall, within communist gunshot. I have traveled 200,000 miles where any American fanatics can be found, and you're asking me to uh, be afraid of the people in my own country? Summoned, Mr. President? I did. Mrs. Kennedy, uh, you're about to be propositioned. Really? Really. I have to go to Texas in a couple of days. Why do you have to? Well, uh, Conley and Yalber are uh, tearing each other to shreds. If they're not uh, reconciled soon, the presidential ticket won't stand a chance in the state come 64. Even with Lyndon? Even with Lyndon, I barely carried the state. No, I need to uh, broaden my base, and uh, I'd like you there with me. In Texas? Why? Well, you made 13 trips abroad as First Lady and none in the States. You'd be a big help to me. Gonna be all those rich Republican broads wearing uh, mink coats and diamond bracelets and, uh, well, you've got to look as marvelous as any of them. Show those damn Texans what uh, good taste really is. <laughs> what do you say, huh? Okay. All right. Thank you. 
understand why uh, nobody gives a damn what linen I wear. It's important I look all right in Dallas. Why do I have to be blown around in a motorcade first? No bubble. Jack. I've instructed them not to put a bubble on the car unless it rains. We've got to be out in the open, Mrs. Kennedy, where people can see us. Here are some of those suggestions you requested on Texas humor. Thank you. I ask you here, Mr. White, because as a reporter, you're one of the friendlies. I am indeed. Do you want to talk about it? Yes. There had been the, the biggest motorcade from the airport. Hot, wild, like Mexico and Vienna. The sun was so strong in our faces. I couldn't put on sunglasses. And then we saw a, a tunnel up ahead. I thought it would be cool in the tunnel. I, I thought if you were on the left, the sun wouldn't get in your eyes. They were gunning the motorcycles. There were these little uh, backfires. There was noise like that. I thought they were backfires. Then next, I saw Conley grabbing his arm, saying, no, no, no. No, with his fist beating. Then Jack turned and and I turned. All I, all I remember was a blue-gray building up ahead. And Jack turned back so neatly. His last expression was uh, so neat. You know, 
You know that wonderful expression he had when they'd uh, ask him a question about one of the ten million pieces they have in a rocket? And, and just before he'd answer, he, he looked puzzled. Then he slumped forward. He was holding out his hand. Uh, then he slumped into my lap. Then Glenn Hill, the Secret Service man, he... he loved us. He made my life so easy. He was the first man in the car. And I... I, I kept saying, Jack, Jack. And someone was yelling, he's... He's dead. He's dead. All the ride to the hospital, I, I kept bending over him, saying, Jack, Jack, can you hear me? I love you, Jack. But he was dead. Oh. At the hospital, they tried to keep me from him, but I... I said, I'm not leaving. It's my husband. His blood is all over me. History. History is what those bitter old men write about. History belongs to heroes, Mr. And heroes must not be forgotten. What do you want me to write, Mrs. Kennedy? No one will ever know everything about Jack. This little boy sick so much of the time. Reading the Knights of the Round Table. Jack was full of history. And if it... if it made him this way, if it made him see the heroes, then maybe other little boys will... see... history. Why did I wash the blood off? I should have left it there. Let them see what they I want to say this one thing. It's almost an obsession with me. All I keep thinking about is this line from a, a musical comedy. At night, before we'd go to sleep, we had a, an old Victrola. And Jack liked to play some records. And the song he loved the most was The Last Sight of Camelot. Sad Camelot. Don't let it be forgot that once there was a spot, one brief shining moment that was known as Camelot. There'll never be another Camelot again. Each evening from December to December. Before you drift to sleep upon your cot. Think back on all the tales that you remember. Of Camelot. Ask every person if he's heard the story and tell it strong and clear if he has not. 
that once there was a fleeting wisp of glory called Camelot. 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 Where once it never rained till after sundown. By 8 a.m. the morning fog had flown. Don't let it be forgot that once there was a spot for one brief shining moment that was known as Camelot. Do you like him? Him or her? You have a keen eye. She's the best we have. You'd like to ride her? I'd love to. Go ahead. Steady now. trying to bribe you, my darlings. Trying to show you what a great guy he is. Hey, and he's trying to help your mother make you forget your old man. Bribery. Pure bribery. Oh, they look lovely. Well, take that one. And that, you like that, Jacqueline? Yes. Take that one, and Lee, you like that? Yes, oh, yes. Then you shall have it. Well, now, that's it for clothes. We have the shoes, we have the undies. Ladies. On to the next shop. I'll have the bill for you in a moment, Mr. Bouvier. Wrap them, send them, and charge them. inside.
I've had calls from every shop in town. What in hell do you think you're doing? Buying up all of Rhode Island? You think that'll make it up to them? They're my children, too, Janet. Mine. I don't like substitute fathers. <laughs> substitute fathers? What do you think you've been? just his fault, Janet. It's a tug of war. They're the prize. The winner gets the children. Well, I don't intend to lose. I want Jacqueline where he can't get to her every weekend. And where might that be? Miss Porter's school in Farmington, Connecticut. I've been thinking about it for some time. It's a great place for young girls. It teaches them discipline and responsibility. Also, it's some distance from her father. We couldn't get to see her too often, either. I don't mind not seeing her that often. As long as he can't. The following dramatization is based on events in the life of Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy. Material was derived from a variety of books, articles, and interviews.
to you doing up at this ungodly hour? And where are you going? Question is, what are you doing up at this ungodly hour, and where have you been? Aren't you coming to the horse show? You promised. Well, of course I am. I wouldn't miss that. You go on ahead, and Daddy will catch up. You sure? Well, I have to change into something with wider lapels. Let's face it, love. Yours aren't big enough to carry all those blue ribbons and get a win. Don't you dare. to entertain. You're there to learn how to move gracefully, to walk like a young lady. But you can't walk like a young lady if you don't behave like one. Must you be so rebellious? I was just having fun. <sighs> Is he coming to see you tonight? He would like to be called Uncle Hugh. Are you going to marry him? Uncle Hugh has a beautiful place in Newport, Hammersmith Farm, much prettier than Lasada. You'd like that, wouldn't you? And he has three children of his own. You wouldn't be lonely there. I'm not lonely here. Are you? Yes. Very. We're going to be married. Jacqueline, aren't you coming inside? It'll be fine. You see, it'll be just fine. As far as Uncle Hugh is concerned, you're just as much his as his children. 
please, Jacqueline. The guests will be arriving any moment. Inside, Jacqueline, please. Excuse me, miss, but your mother would like you to be there when the guests arrive. Shall I tell her you're coming downstairs? Yes. sort of make their own dress code. For instance, on certain occasions, they all appear in white poplin coats. Oh, how nice. Yes. It's a sort of tradition. Well, I suppose that's it. Unless you have some questions. No. Jacqueline? Well, then ask one of the seniors to point you in the direction of your dormitory. You can walk it. It's not very far. It'll give you a chance to look around. Oh, and I'll send you a white coat. Now, don't look so morose. You're going to love it here. Jacqueline, don't ask for privileges, will you? Try to be like the rest of the girls, hmm? From the day you took your turn as waitress, the dry cleaner in town has declared a dividend on his unprofitable establishment. Why? I fail to understand your behavior. Your English instructor tells me that you are a model student. Well, I like English, and I like him. Well, you can't go around dropping a pie into the lap of an instructor. 
Another thing. I've been told that you consistently disrupt study periods. You refuse to wear your white coat when the other girls wear theirs. I thought you'd support me in this stupid thing. That's why I wanted you here. Of course I support you always in anything, but there are rules, old girl, for everybody. But you always said there were different rules for different people. Did I say that? Huh. Well, I probably meant it at the time. You confuse me. Both of you confuse me. Mummy keeps telling me to be like all the other girls, and you keep telling me I'm different. I don't know what I am. I'm sorry, Bob. I really am sorry for what we've done to you. But I want you to be you. And when you are, you'll be free of both of us. And then what? All I can do is speak French. That won't get me very much. Not even a husband. I'll probably wind up a house mother here at Farmington and never get married. Even that gink with the pearl buttons won't want me. <laughs> They'll all want you. The question is, whom do you want? I want someone like you. Like me. I'm not one to be fashioned after, my darling. You see, I have no real talent, other than maybe a talent to charm. That wears pretty thin after a while. Not with me. Your Adonis is growing old, I'm afraid, my love. I'm not getting up off the ground the way I used to. But you, you always will. How do you know? I want a divorce, Jack. She is Mars, isn't she? I want a divorce. Oh, you don't want one any more than I do. You're wrong. This time I mean it. Hush, let's watch her. I'm tired of watching you spend money we don't have. I'm tired of your debts and your drinking and Jim, I can't just wait till we get home. No. I'm too vulnerable at home. Too easily talked out of it at home. You'll make your usual promises. And I'll forgive you for something you'll only do again the next day and the next. So I'm telling you now, here, where you can't put your arms around me. Oh, Jacqueline! Oh, Jacqueline! Get a doctor, someone! Yes. Do you need a doctor, my darling? No. Oh, you can stand. Well, if a boobier can stand, she can walk. Isn't that so? May I escort you, my angel? I'm not going to give up the children. You want custody? I'll fight for them, Janet. Will you now? You owe thousands in personal debts and thousands in back taxes. Shall I go on? I can, you know. There's lots more. No judge would give you custody. going away. Aha. Uh -huh. I'll miss you. Will you now? Will you miss me? I don't think so. 
You see, I think that I'm going to see a lot more of you and your sister during this trial separation than I did before. Oh. Anyway, it's not going to be too long before I lose you to some gink who you think is wonderful because he looks so romantic in the evening. Probably steals his mother's pearl earrings and uses them for dress shirt buttons up. <laughs> Don't you think that's funny? Yes. And why aren't you laughing? You're in trouble, old girl. Trouble. You know why? Because you like your old man. We live in a very special world, you and I. A world where we <laughs> fall off horses and off buildings, <sighs> out of airplanes, into oceans. But we show the rest of the world what it's like out there, don't we? Gets a little bumpy. We always get up again. 